Our centering song this morning is brought to you from a United Church minister in Philadelphia. Allie is going to bring her up and I will let her introduce her song. Hi, I'm Linda Noonan, senior pastor at the Chestnut Hill United Church in Philadelphia, part of the Power Interfaith family. As is often the case in our various religious traditions, it's the people who seem to have the least amount of power. The small, the women, the children, the poor, the queer, the sick, the broken, the outsiders, who end up making the biggest difference. In the Hebrew scriptures, the story of Esther tells us of another time much like our own, where the world is a mess, a few profit off the bodies and the labors of the many, and it looks like there's no justice to be found. And yet, the message to Esther, someone who is a woman and an outsider, who risks her life for her people is this, you were made for such a time as this. Spoiler alert, Esther goes on to save her people. We were made for these times, these painful, broken, difficult, powerful times. I've written this song, which you're free to use in any setting. It's a zipper song. You can add words to create new verses. The basic words are, we were made for these times, and like gold will keep on shining. We were made for these times. I hope you find your voice in so many ways, and I hope that you will sing along. We were made for these times. We were made for these times. And like gold will keep on shining.
strong, stay rooted and connected. Amen. Although we are in Canada and we are experiencing a completely different pandemic than those of, those of our neighbors to the south, there's a lot of takeaway for me in Reverend Mike's words. I do feel utterly powerless. I am told that the best thing I can do is to stay at home. And that feels like a cruel joke. I want to be marching in the streets. I want to be rallying my congregation to write letters to officials demanding that they do a better job. Although I'm not exactly certain what a better job would look like, to be honest. I want to be supporting people as they are walking through the discomfort of their own emotional roller coasters. Holding their hands and offering them a comforting hug as we struggle with feelings of inadequacy, fear, joy, confusion, and grief. But I feel powerless in all of those areas. And so I continue to sit in front of my computer, hoping that we can all connect through the mediums that are available to us. Hoping that by listening to the authorities, I will feel a sense of power and support to the community. Unfortunately, the story of Esther, who saved the Jews from certain death, by speaking with the Persian king and convincing him not to kill her people, feels as though it holds little guidance for us. We cannot save our people by a well-placed yet incredibly hard conversation with the powerful. Her royal status indeed was meant for her time because she had power in her life, because she was of the noble class she was able to save her people. But that does little for us who are fighting a virus that doesn't listen to reason or people in authority. Powerlessness in times such as these does suggest that we look to other heroes, other role models and other stories. Much like Reverend Linda Susan suggested in our opening words this morning, Time is cyclical. Although we have not been here before, we have stories that can help us gain wisdom from and for these times. And thus we turn to Easter. I would like to lift up, first of all, how incredibly challenging and maybe even ironic it is to have a non-theist, Unitarian Universalist minister preaching about Jesus Christ's resurrection. But not only a story of resurrection, the story of Easter is a story of hope and rebirth happening amidst this time of grief and death and devastation. To be trying to recognize the miracle of Jesus having risen from the tomb he had been placed in after his crucifixion for someone who was raised to see symbolism in Jesus's story, but not really to glean a lot of meaning from it, this has proven to be really challenging. And to try to weave into it a story about how this is a time that life comes back into the world around us, we need not have to roll a stone away, but just brush aside some of the mulch and rotting leaves and dried out cedar needles to find the evidence of growth below. A time of hope and joy and delight as things come back to life feels wrong and challenging as we are told so often by health officials and government ministers, stay at home stay inside, stay safe, and flatten the curve. A time when we are told it is likely going to be another two to three months of the measures that we have already taken. I have to say that finding meaning and relevance from this story has also proven challenging. Hope and rebirth, 
This is what I believe the story of Easter to be. And how is that supposed to support us now? But then I thought of something else to consider. Something that I hadn't really considered from the Easter story before. And that is that the essence of Easter story is transformation. It is about letting go of the way in which things have been and leaning into a new way of being. For Jesus, it was the story of transformation from his earthly life to be in heaven. A transformation from human to the Christ, son of God and savior for many. And for those who were closest to him, it was a transformation of followers into leaders. The world as they had known it, transformed by the possibilities of healing, justice, grace and freedom, blessed by God's loving compassion, evaporated as their teacher gasped out his last breaths on the cross. Nothing of his bright vision remained, only the memory of betrayal and suffering and death. And yet it is in the confusion and anguish of the disappearance, that inexplicable empty tomb, that the first whispers began on the lips of the brokenhearted women, trembling at their own audacity. What if the story isn't actually over? What if the message still lives within us, they wondered, is made real by who we are together? What if the vision that he taught us is still as true as it ever was? What if he is still among us, instructing, encouraging, calling us to rise again? This story of transformation has the capacity to hold my own story right now. And I hope that it will help bring light to the stories that you are all living through. I'm not sure about all of you, but I definitely did not have this in mind when I began 2020. I had visions of a great shift in my life. I looked forward to possibilities of growth and change. I had chosen a word to help me dive deeply into my plans for the year. Have you ever heard of this practice before? Selecting one word that becomes a theme for your entire year? Mine was architect. And I have to give props to my friend Rebecca for narrowing it down for me. I was spiraling around the idea of builder and designer, but she was the one who put architect into my consciousness. As I began this year, 2020, I began working through plans for the next 18 months of work with Colonial Unitarians. And I began to consider what my 32nd revolution around the sun would look like. I decided I wanted to be very conscious of how things were going to happen and spent time making plans and researching next steps rather than ending up in similar situations as last year and not having new ideas of how to deal with them. Being an architect meant I was going to spend a lot of time focusing on planning, developing a design and executing it. I was searching for a tidy, stable, comprehensive and logical way of getting through these things this time, much like our opening words suggested. I didn't want to admit that I lived within a paradox. Okay, I knew that there was going to be much uncertainty and instability because that's the way it is when you interweave your life and your career into a community setting. You need to be flexible enough to go with the flow of the group. But this paradox, the paradox of celebrating Jesus's escape from the tomb while we are all trapped at home is not the flexibility that I had envisioned for myself. I had envisioned becoming brave and being, beginning to do things outside of my comfort zone in order 
in, in order to increase the number of people coming into our church on Sunday mornings and Friday evenings. I had envisioned having challenging conversations with board members as well as with congregants about the need to increase pledging in order to continue this ministry or the congregation would risk the possibility of going without a minister again. Adam and I began imagining what it would be like to start a family, to have him start his own crochet art business, and to perhaps buy an electric vehicle. There were conversations and plans that I was going, these were the conversations and plans that I was going to be the architect of. Not trying to figure out how to work Zoom and how to get my congregants on Zoom. Or what a piano sounded like when it was picked up by a cell phone or computer microphone. I wasn't intending to have to work from home because the internet at the church would not allow me to have video calls. And I wasn't intending to take over the art space in our house. I wasn't planning on having conversations with loved ones, attempting con to convince them not to travel to Kelowna for spring break or for Easter visits. I was thrown into this reality, this new normal for the next several months anyways. And now I need to learn, and I'm sure we all need to learn, how to redesign our lives. My architectural design no longer suited the scenario we find ourselves in. I'm not certain I was made for these times. I am not certain I was made to be forced through a transition, a shift that none of us had in mind or planned for. I did not plan a transformation for this year. I do not want to be asked to shift all of my plans, to rework my ideas and where I will spend my time and studying new ways of doing things. And yet I'm here. Here we are trying to realize how our lessons, how our teachings will help lead us through these times. And this is something that I think Unitarians can be particularly good at. We recognize the interconnected web of all existence. We didn't necessarily need a pandemic to show us that. We recognize that our savior will come from the community that we are building around us, not the death of someone from 2000 years ago. I recognize that perhaps I was indeed made for these times because I know that connecting people, telling them about our story, our religion, that offers life and peace and saving for so many people who believe that they were not welcomed into a faith community is a message that I can share no matter where I am and what kind of technology exists between us. And I know that there is a Messiah among us actually within each one of us. So perhaps I was made for these times. Perhaps we were made for these times, this time of transformation. And here is a way in which you can help. If you believe in this story, that our Unitarian Church has the capacity to welcome and offer a community of hope and love and home for everyone, I would ask you to start inviting people to join us. There might never be a better opportunity than this moment, this time right now, where your friends and family can hide behind a computer screen, where they don't need to wake up early and drive to a new place and meet new people. Help us transform this community. Next Sunday, the worship service committee, the worship committee will be sharing an Earth Day service, a celebration of the beauty of this earth and an earth communion. And the Sunday after that, on April 27th, I will be sharing a Unitarian Universalism 101 service, describing what it means to be a people of collective liberation rather than personal salvation. And so each new person among us in the next few weeks will be able to have a more wholesome understanding 
of what Unitarianism is. We can help with the transformation of this community during a time when transformation is at its most challenging. Reverend Mike stated, but the dream of a whole society rooted in cooperation and mutuality in the care for all of its peoples feels lost in this nightmare. Let us not lose that dream. Let us not lose the architectural design of a community rooted in cooperation and mutuality. Let us live into the story of transformation. Let us realize that we were made for these times and we can share our story even when we are feeling powerless. Let us reclaim this time and allow ourselves to live fully into the paradox of our lives and our universe. Let us make it so.